Hey, so welcome back, folks. I am now live on Facebook here with our uh, Writer's Showcase show, and I have my, my show notes over here. I apologize for the mess. We were just going over what we were going to be looking at here, and we were going live on Instagram and uh, talking about a few different items on here, but uh, Instagram doesn't allow you to do the wonderful landscape format, so we've uh, decided to go on to Facebook to do the rest of the show here. So um, let me just see if I could turn this around here. Okay, so we have a few Conklin pens and also a, uh, an Aurora uh, pen as well as you see here. And I will show that off first here. Just bear with me a second. Okay, so hello, my name is Tom Otto and uh, I am very bright right now with how this is here, so I'm just Doing a little adjustment here. See if I can. Okay, so I sit, stand back a little bit. We're at the, uh, we're in the um, lunchroom here. So uh, we have our wonderful little letter wall here, and I also have this wonderful uh, Aurora Dual Cart fountain pen, which is made after a vintage model uh, that uh, Aurora used to make back in the 1950s, 1960s, and originally. This model uh, was intended to be made for an Italian company that was celebrating its 60th anniversary, and they wanted Aurora to make them a pen that was uh, a pen that would have been made around in that same time period of when they had uh, created the company. So uh, what Aurora did was they made them a batch of these pens, and then they said, you know what, this is probably a really good idea, which it certainly is. Pelican's done it before. A few other companies have gone back to the well, so to speak, and have uh, brought back some old, good old vintage style type designs with, with great success because vintage is, is one of those uh, categories of a fountain pen that actually is still quite desirable. And it's great to see it brought back into the mainstream and, and brought it into uh, contemporary uh, pens that are being made today that are covered under warranty that uh, if you know if you have any issues with you could you don't have to worry about sending it necessarily to uh, get it repaired you could go have it sent for warranty service so uh, that's one of the nice little uh, benefits of this beauty here so uh, this Aurora dual cart has a slip cap so it uh, cap just pulls on and off kind of like a little pop here uh, some of the pens, what, from what I've heard, some of the pens have a little bit, you know, like a looser fitting cap, so it's not very tight. Um, that's how I've heard some of the comments here, which I, I could kind of see that. It's not like a, a firm snap uh, that you would feel when you put the cap on this pen, but, uh, you know, good enough nevertheless. Posts on the back. Has a nice, uh, has a nice size to it. And, uh, and we're going to look at this in a bit more detail. Let me flip the camera around to do so. Okay, so sorry for the mess of boxes here, but we were just opening things up in a rash of excitement. So this uh, dual cart came in this very elaborate box that Aurora had made. It's got some nice padding in it here and a uh, beautiful graphic that you know brings back that 50s type nostalgia with the advertising that they would do, which was beautiful. Most of it was either painted or illustrated, not photographed per se, but um, beautiful nonetheless. The uh, the dual cart here, the, oh, as I was mentioning before, the board, uh, the uh, the burgundy version did have a box that was a vintage box that they actually pulled out of the cellar or out of the warehouse, wherever they had them stocked in Aurora's factory. And these were like some of the oldest, oldest boxes that they had. And they actually boxed uh, a number of these pens in that type of box, and they had a bit of a of a musty type smell to them. I think if you check out uh, Matt Armstrong's video uh, on the Pen Habit YouTube channel, you can see what I'm talking about when you look at that box. But now, since the initial run has gone and has sold out already, we only have the new modern Aurora gift box, which it's still a nice gift box. I mean, I'm not big on presentation, uh, but it's a very nice box presentation overall has a little bottle of Aurora ink that's in here. Has got a uh, converter. So it's, this is the screw type converter, which I will remove here. So it's got the Aurora screw uh, piston converter. 
which we will leave aside here because we're going to use that. It also has a, uh, an Aurora cartridge here too. Probably one or two, yeah, so we have two cartridges in here, which is cool. So in case you like cartridges, this has got a little of both worlds here. So this is the dual cart, and we'll take a look at the nib here. If I could get it to zoom, okay. So we have a very small feed, and most of the nib and feed is completely covered by this uh, plastic section that's here. Which is very nice because you could get, if you're the type that needs to get really high up into the writing point, to, you know, you're going to safely be able to do that because none of the nib or feed is exposed. So you could get really high up onto, if you wanted to, or uh, my natural grip is more a little bit further back. So if I, you know, I'm not really affected by that, but you could get pretty close up and not have to worry about ink going onto your uh, fingertips there. So it's a nice Bordeaux, you know, rich burgundy body to this material that's on the body of the pen. And then we have a, uh, you know, gold filled, gold plated cap with, uh, with engraved line pattern. No room for additional engraving here at the flat top and the flat bottom as well. So we'll just pop this converter in. You know, nice tight fit in there for the converter, and we're going to fill it up with some Waterman inspired blue, which is a turquoise color. Let's open this up here. It's a little bit tight. That's a nice turquoise. So we're just going to dip the nib, you know, slightly in because we don't want to go full on there because the the section is very. Uh, short, so let's see if we could grab just a bit of ink. I'm getting some bubbles as I'm pushing out the air. And yep, and we draw it up just nice and fine. You don't want too much ink in there, because I'm not planning on, planning on flushing it out afterwards. So let me get my trusty towel. Just wipe the section, make sure there's no traces of ink around where I would be possibly gripping the pen. Then we're going to put the body back on here. Now I think this pen is pretty much meant to be posted because I like the size. This, the size of it kind of seems a little small if you're going for it unposted, but you know, the, the posted feel you know, it just kind of feels natural and it does feel a little bit more back heavy because of that gold metal cap that's on there. But uh, since the pen is already kind of on the, you know, the, the, uh, the more compact side, and it's not like, let's say, like a Homo sapiens, which I was looking at last week, you know, the, the, the actual length of it's not really bothering me in terms of the weight and everything. And the cap posts pretty deeply, too. Uh, it's nice and secure on there, despite it not having like a particular, you know, click or anything. It just it posts pretty nicely. So let me get up close here. Uh, this is my uh, this is Claire Fontaine paper, grid format. That's kind of a, yeah, I don't really like that too much. I'm kind of uh, not in the mode here in terms of my uh, handwriting capabilities at the moment. Well, let's do some figure eights here. Nice and responsive. The flow is solid. And this is a, um, oh geez, yeah, this is a medium point. Oh, sorry. Now, I've, I've read and I've heard some people say that this is like a really, you know, beautiful nib, very smooth, and it's just a stainless steel nib too. It's a gold-plated stainless steel nib, so it's not like a, you know, not a 14K or anything like that, uh, which would drive up the price, of course, but this is, yeah, this is a, a beautiful smooth nib, extremely 
you know, it's solid with its flow, you know, no, no skipping or no hesitations. Nice and uh, good, you know, good amount of flow going on there, not too wet. Uh, not too dry either, but it just it just feels just right, you know. It just has a nice uh, feel to it, and then plus also the grip too, with it being solid like this, and kind of it's a pick your own grip, so you could go a little bit further back if you prefer a, uh, a a thicker grip, or you could come really close here if you like, you know, a very uh, precise and uh, methodical sort of grip here, and you can get in some nice detail you know, without having, you know, and, and, and really have a refined control over the tip by going a little bit further up and just really kind of clenching it a little bit tighter. I think you could get, or you could go for a nice, like, loose flow, you know, backing up your grip a little bit further up the, the section there. But that's impressive. I really do, you know, enjoy this, the, the nib on this. And, uh, you know, I just, the, the, with the Inspired Blue, um, you know, Waterman inks have always been extremely safe and reliable uh, for fountain pens, for vintage and modern fountain pens. And, you know, I've, I've always liked to use that type of ink if I'm testing or, um, you know, if I'm, I'm trying out a pen for the first time or, you know, as I have somebody who, you know, wants to uh, do an adjustment on a pen, like I'll use Waterman ink. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, my go-to. That and Aurora ink as well is a very, you know, safe ink to use. So, um let us take a look at, now we just took a look at the Aurora Duo Cart, let's take a look at our next pen on the docket today, which is the Conklin Herringbone. So this is a new collection, it's a redo uh, or a redesign of uh, Conklin's uh, previous Herringbone collection, which I also have here. Uh, it is a uh, it's a it's a metal base bodied pen, so it's got you know good amount of weight to it. And what they did was on the barrel here, they engraved a herringbone design pattern that just undulates throughout the cap and the barrel. And you know it's it's just really kind of looking up close at that detail. It's just very very striking. And what they do is they coat it with several layers of uh, of like a uh, an epoxy lacquer. Uh, which is translucent, which generates that beautiful, like, red, lustrous glow to it. Very deep and very, uh, you know, hits the light in that certain way. It just, very, it just you know, vibrates. Uh, and then matching it with the chrome trim, and you can see a herringbone is uh, put on the uh, cap band here, along with some crescents. And we have the Conklin logo is uh, struck on the clip, which is a very, very tight clip that's on top of here. So see, this is a uh, twist-off cap, and reveals a metal, very, very cylindrical type of section here. Nice big uh, Conklin Toledo nib, and this is the 1.1 millimeter stub nib, which I wanted to take out to uh, to test ink it for you, and just, then just see how uh, everything goes here. And it has a converter already inside there. It's a standard uh, Schmidt type converter. Let's see, is it threaded? It is a threaded converter in here too, so extra tight fit with a nice secure twist here. So let's also take a look at, because we want to compare um, over the previous model of the herringbone, which I have over here too. This was the uh, updated Yaffa version of the Herringbone, and why I say Yaffa is that Yaffa Pen Company in, Cal in uh, California had purchased uh, the Conklin brand uh, some time ago, and the Herringbone was one of the more popular designs, and they had re-released uh, their version of the Herringbone after they had bought the um, bought the company, and uh, and it's you know it's, it's a it actually feels a bit lighter than the newer Herringbone, if, if that makes any sense, even though this is a larger pen. It, it feels like it just has a bit more, you know, the newer Hemingbone has a little bit more heft. As you can see, uh, it was probably because it's more, more of a density issue, I would guess. But the, um, the length is roughly the same. So you have the herringbones uh, next to each other here. So we have, uh, you know, and then we have the black trim, which of course is a departure from uh, your standard either chrome or gold trim kind of makes it have a more contemporary uh, hip look, more high-tech looking, and it's got the black matching nib on it as well. 
but same concept, just executed in a different body. So this uh, this Conklin herringbone has got more of a um, you know a traditional sort of like flat top look. You know, more stately looking, a V tapered uh, type body here. You have the uh, same kind of engraving pattern. There's a lot of gorgeous looking lines that are here that it's coated with that um, with that lacquer. And you can feel, you know, when you run your fingernail over it or you run your fingertips through the uh, on on top of the material here, you can feel a texture. Um, you know, you can feel that it's not completely smooth. So it's not like it's coated so much that. Uh, you wouldn't feel. You actually do feel the, uh, you know, the, a slight a bit of texture when you run your fingers over it, which is kind of cool. I, I do enjoy that. I just mostly enjoy just really like looking at it and just kind of showing it off in the light here because it just hits it in such a, a way that it almost looks like a, it mimics like a satin look almost. It's like almost, it's, a, it's very mesmerizing. So um, the older herringbone you know, as you're looking at this pen, you try to post it here. It's a pretty large pen. So you take a look here, unscrew this. And, uh, you know, for lengthwise, I believe with, with it posted, we're going to be looking at a similar length here. Yep. Well, the, uh, the older style herringbone looks like it beats out, the, you know, about like about a three-eighths of an inch, maybe. So it's a little bit, the older style is a little bit longer, a little bit girthier in the body and the cap. But uh, like I said, it's about density, I think, with this one. is that you have a bit more of a denser feel to this material, since it's uh, all metal. And then the section two, the big uh, part to note here is that the section in the old style herringbone is, is a uh, plastic section. This is a metal section, so I know that might be a deal breaker for some of you guys because uh, of, you know, a sweaty... Uh, hands that it just you don't like it just it just slips towards the front and they really don't make an effort here to kind of flare out the section like in the older style in the older style the section at least flares out a little bit so that your fingers if they do slide towards the front at least they have that little lip there that prevents you from going all the way down to the nib this the section is just it's essentially just a straight cylinder um, with maybe like a very very slight taper towards the end and you know, there's really nothing to stop you, especially if you have uh, perspiring fingertips there from your from your hands, like constantly just trying to go towards that nib. So let's get this uh, let's get this guy inked up here. Let's try it out. I'm eager to see. I, I always do like the stubs on uh, Monteverde or or Conklin pens. Usually give you some good line variation, and also a big point to mention too is that the older style the price point was 108 after a discount these uh the newer style are are 55.95 after a uh, 20 percent discount so it's a it's a very very significant um price decrease which is very rare these days because you don't really see too many companies saying oh well, let's come out with a new model of pen and let's make it cheaper than the ones before that does not happen very often, but uh, since it's such a big departure from the previous model, I could see why, uh, you know, they, maybe they want to go to complete redesign to make it much more affordable, which is a good thing. You know, see, I'm getting some ink on my fingers, but that's okay. We're cool with that. Aren't we cool with that, guys? Are we good? I think we are. So, uh, let's screw this back on here. My first inclination is to post the cap on this guy and see how well it writes with the cap posted. Now see, I'm not putting any pressure on the nib to create that line variation. It's just the natural line variation caused by the shape of the nib, which is the uh, the 1.1 millimeter stub. 
So if maybe if I tried to put a little bit of pressure on it, see if I can maybe even increase that a bit more, which I can. So I'm just putting a bit more pressure on those downstrokes and I'm actually able to create it's a bit more line variation. I feel like you have to be a bit more deliberate with this nib as I'm kind of feeling it's it's kind of pulling a little bit. The downstroke is really nice. I think the side to side, if I'm doing it very quickly, I'm going to miss. See, it's a bit dry if I'm doing it that way. But if I do it nice and slow, I'll get a nice even line. So it's a little bit it's a little bit on the drier side, but I, you know, I really do appreciate the fact that it does have that capability of, uh, of expressing uh, line variation. So very, very cool. I do enjoy it. And there's my, my notes here today. So I'm just turning this around so I can get to a blank spot on the page. Let's do a little a quick brown fox. Now that is fun. I do like I do like the fact that you do get out of the box, you get line variation with the stub nib. And as I'm seeing it on here, I'm getting ink on my fingers because of uh, probably I just didn't yeah I didn't wipe it down I believe well enough here when I filled it. So I'm getting some ink on my fingers, which I anticipated that was maybe going to be an issue considering that the uh, the section really doesn't have that much of a uh, of a flare out to uh, prevent my fingers from touching right close to the nib there after filling it up. Lovely, very nice, I like this. Yeah, so that is the, uh, that's the Conklin herringbone right there, the newer version in the, uh, the red 1.1 millimeter stub. These are not on the website right now at the moment. We're just working on getting some images to put them up on there. So they will be available shortly. I believe there's also the, uh, there's a gray version and a blue version as well. And uh, like I said, the price on these fountain pens are $55.95, which is actually excellent compared to the older model, uh, which uh, we're, we're selling for $108.95. Uh, so this older model is discontinued. We only have maybe you know a handful of units left of these guys. But uh, if you like a bit of a, a larger pen that's got uh, that doesn't weigh a heck of a lot, that this is a good option here too. And we have a bunch of different nib sizes available in that as well. So um, <clears throat> so uh, one other thing we just wanted to uh, mention here. Uh, you know, besides, of course, saying, you know, about the, uh, we have also the, the ink that we used on this was uh, Waterman Inspired Blue, which is a lovely turquoise ink, as you were seeing here. It's got a little bit of a, uh, of a shading effect to it, especially using it with the, with a thicker stub type of nib. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions about uh, the Conklin Herringbone or the 
or do a cart, uh, you could feel free to give uh, to send me an email at tom at goldspot.com, um, or you could just leave a comment on the video here on on Facebook. We'll repost it, and uh, and also um, if you, uh, I'll also repost this on YouTube uh, in about a week or so. You should probably see that. So um, I hope that you have, all have a great, fabulous, and healthy, safe, happy. Fourth of July weekend. Um, try to take Monday off too. Make it a four-day weekend. That would be kind of cool. So um, yeah, I hope everything is going well. And if you have any uh, questions or want to see any different pens for uh, our writer showcases or want to go over any particular topics, you can feel free to just uh, contact me directly, and I will uh, be happy to oblige. So take care and have a great day, guys.